once you've been in that situation, into that intensity of fighting and that comradeship, and then you go back on leave, and there are suddenly these people who've been having having this normal life, which of course is not normal to you anymore because you're living in another sort of bubble altogether, and it's impossible to. And I always think that's the maybe the saddest um, residue, really. I like to think that that's changed now with you know counselling and you know more support from the services. Well, you hope so because there was none then. That's yeah. for sure, was there? It's very interesting watching reading letters of. Uh, of soldiers back back home, um, which I know had to be censored, but nonetheless, it's all massively, everything is understated and there is a dignity about it. Yes, a little bit about the weather, a little bit about the socks and tobacco. Uh, uh, it's just Hope extraordinary. Yeah. The yeah. Pink. Yes. And there's sort of formality. Yeah, yeah. Of there's it. formality of relationships. Yeah. It was the form of relationships was mm. so important and what was unsaid being much, much more important than anything it was said. And anyway, you didn't say it. Well, you don't want to inflict your stuff on anybody else, yeah, do you? You want yeah, to carry absolutely. your own burdens. Yes. And... I think women of that generation were particularly like that. They particularly knew they had a responsibility not to inflict their difficulties or problems on on other people. The, the deep silence that they lived mm. in, a lot of these women, utterly, utterly miserable. But they were married, they had families, they, they just kept quiet to the grave. And um, Well, there wasn't really any choice, was there? No, there wasn't, there wasn't. <laughs>